Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the report from Tiger Mountain here, special report with um, David Thrussell. Uh, tell us, David, tell us a little bit about your, yourself. He's Australia's answer to David Icke, so we've got a special report here, I ladies and gentlemen. I dispute that and on every level. Minus uh, the lizards, though, minus <laughs> the lizards. He doesn't believe in the I lizards. I barely know any lizards at all. That's true, know? I don't know them yes. either. I'm a musician, yes. uh, a sometimes writer, and a general troublemaker. And you're a bit of a conspiracy theorist, I think we can say that. Would that be... I dispute that. I think I'm a free thinker. A free thinker, okay. Yes. So, um, here we are, we're uh, in the middle of this um, COVID-19 crisis. Yes. Um, what do you make of it, David? What do you make of it? Tell well, the audience. I think the, the I think the most rational way to dissect what's happening is to split it into halves. Okay? So this half, you have the virus, yes. whatever that may be, okay? And there's plenty of room for dispute about what that might be, okay? Yeah. And on the other half, you have the reaction, okay? And I feel there's far less room to maneuver about what the reaction is. And I think the reaction is clearly a totalitarian intent, mm -hmm. in, in intent. You've seen uh, this hysterical lockdown rolled out across a large part of the world. Mm -hmm. You've seen this extraordinary uh, curtailment of civil liberties mm -hmm. um you've seen uh the media be on their most hysterical pitch that you can imagine uh and i think this the reaction is very tangible and I, it's very totalitarian in intent and in action you know i think i mean as someone who's uh you know read a lot and looked very closely at events like 9 11 and the kennedy assassination and these kind of things yes i think there there's a very similar uh, stench around yes. this as to those events yes and I would argue that 9-11 and the Kennedy assassination and many other things are clearly intelligence operations yes and when you look at intelligence operations you can see that they a have lots of um, aims there's mm -hmm. lots of boxes to be ticked yep and there are many layers of disinformation and misinformation to distract people you know so for example around 9-11 you know there's all sorts of layers of disinformation there yes. that you can get trapped in and you can argue endlessly in, in a very cyclical manner until infinity about yes. that. Kennedy assassination is the same. You know, where the shots fired from, how many shooters, blah, 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 all these details which distract you mm -hmm. from the thing that ultimately is far more tangible and that is the reaction. Now, what, what do you, let's speak to the genesis of this event. A lot of people have laid the blame at different at different doors. Some people have, well, a lot of people have blamed uh, China, the China virus, as Donald Trump has said. Other people have blamed, I guess, the globalist cabal, the kind of uh, Bill Gates circle and the, 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 cir the people of Davos, uh, circle of Davos and uh, Kissinger and, and, that, and that guy, Charles Lieber, the Harvard University guy. Sure. And, and when you say intelligence, do you mean like the CIA, the NSA? Is that what you're talking I about? Mean, what I mean is I mean actually larger than that. I mean what you could perhaps call the intelligence community, which really is the overlapping interests of all of those groups. Yes. Because they have overlapping interests. They sure. have overlapping aims. Mm -hmm. you know? I don't think you could really single out the CIA or the NSA or blah, 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 blah. Actually, behind those groups, perhaps your best definition is what the people lately called the deep state. Yes. You know? It's the overlapping interests of all those groups. The deep state, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. You know, I mean, you know, they have the same aims and they have the same interests. You know, mm -hmm. and I mean, as to the possible origins of the virus in Wuhan, you know, did it leak from a lab, did it come from the market? The bat, you know? You know, the bat, blah, 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 did the Americans What's introduce your view? it? I think my gut feeling is that all of those are layers of disinformation mm -hmm. to send you off into rabbit holes and red herrings and to send you off arguing and mm. churning your wheels so that you don't look at what's far more tangible, which is the result. And now, the did result you see that video? Is... Did you see that video that came out of uh, Wuhan, where it was like a, a group of people were being led through by the you know Chinese Communist Party? Mm. It was like uh, mainly uh, Asian media, but there's some Western media in there yes. too. And then the people in the what's it called? Uh, the people in the, the high rise blocks. They all said yeah. it's fake. It's not real. They yes. said nothing happened here. Yes. Like like there was no virus at all. Like the whole thing was some kind of stage psyop. Yes. You know, what do you, let's speak to that. What, what do you think of that? I think that's extremely interesting. Isn't it? And I thought it was interesting the, the way the, ma the, the mainstream media cast that. Yeah, instantly. They cast that in this obscure other direction. Yes. Which was like, oh, they're saying that their response of those yeah, uh, public that's servants, uh, blah, blah, blah. And you go, well, there's a far more straightforward interpretation of that. That's always know? an interesting sign. 
I think, well, I think that actually speaks to something very directly, and that is to put it in a nutshell, in my view, you can't ever trust anything from the mainstream media. I mean, they have a track mm. record mm -hmm. of absolute and consistent deceit about mm. any topic that matters and plenty of other topics that don't matter. And why know? are they all on the same page? Why, why is, you know, like, obviously you can understand some Western media, um, you know, like, uh, like in America because it's owned by certain corporations that have interest in these things. But how do you get the ABC in Australia and people like that on board? And they are on board. They're on board, always on board with the globalist message. They, they are always. Um, I think... Uh, basically, you can you can draw a picture of a pyramid. Most of that pyramid is filled with people who are very very dumb. Yes. Okay. And there's a small amount of people who are not as dumb, and they're possibly slightly evil. Yes. So I think most of these people filling the roles in these various media organisations are completely dumb, and they're not capable of critical. So thought. it's the dumb and the evil, basically. Yeah. You know, they're not capable of critical thought. They're not uh, capable of um, passing information or processing information. They simply do what they're told. Yes. You know, they fulfil the role that they're supposed to fulfil. Yes. Um, and that's, I mean, really, my view of the mainstream media is that essentially they're all arms of the intelligence agencies. And yes. I think they've shown this, if you've got eyes to see it, they've shown it time and time again in their responses. You know, mm -hmm. they may pretend to care about the whales over here and they may pretend to care about this social cause over here and that social cause. But when it's time to go to war, when it's time that something that really matters, yes. they're all in lockstep. They all join together, they all pump out the exact same signal at well, the same time. It's been very interesting because something that just happened recently, just uh, in the past couple of days, is Donald Trump has decided to uh, unfund the World Health Organization, which is a kind of globalist, kind of architect of the whole crisis to a certain extent. And um, how do you explain that? I mean, obviously there's a lot of upset amongst, the, say, ABC, and they're all like, oh, Western leaders condemn Trump. I mean, it's interesting. Do you think, do you think Trump is some kind of like fly in the ointment to the globalist agenda, or do you think he's part of it? Or? I'm not completely sure. I don't yeah. have a definitive answer about that. I think from just being an observer, mm -hmm. uh, his election seemed to be some kind of accident. Yes. You know, it seemed to upset all the right people. <laughs> it does, I mean, didn't it? reading the press That's the next day yeah. was hilarious <laughs> to see their meltdowns. As to, I mean, I'm not, uh, I'm not, I'm on the fence, to yeah, be honest. Yeah. You have to wait and see. Yeah, yeah, you know, I, I feel like the, the proof jury's is not, in the pudding. Yeah, yeah the jury's not completely in about that for me. Yep, yep. But it does seem, I mean, it, well, it seems obvious mm -hmm. that Clinton was the anointed candidate. Yep. She was supposed to win. Yep. When she didn't win, and I'm still staggered yep. that she didn't, obviously they weren't able mm -hmm. to rig it quite enough yep. to get her over the line. Um, they had a complete meltdown yep. the next day, and it was hilarious, to be honest. You yes. know, they didn't know what had happened. It was like the sky had fallen in. You yes. know? So, obviously, uh, accidents are possible. Uh, things, you know, wheels come off the wagon. Mm -hmm. uh, but I do believe that there, you know, there's an there's a international conglomerate of overlapping interests and overlapping ideological interests yes. and overlapping financial interests. And I think, basically... As, um, and they are the people behind it. Well, you know, like the saying goes, you know, they play the media. The media is their weapon. I think, of course, you yeah, know, yeah. and it's a as, tremendous weapon. Too, I mean, I think it? it was William Colby or one of these CIA guys called the media the mighty Wurlitzer, and he yes. said, "We play it." Yes, you know, exactly. and, it, and exactly. it sends out the tune that we decide that people are going to hear. You know, and I think mm -hmm. if you can be bothered trying to have a critical overview to, at the media at a time like this, mm. it's actually very useful to see that they. You know, when international capital says jump, they jump. And Always. They pump out the signal, yep. and they tell people how they should behave, and... And that's uh, the way they behave. And that's how it works. Yep. Well, we'll come back for part two of our special report here, from the report from Tiger Mountain, with David Thrustle here at Casa, Casa Thruster, and uh, with some more revelatory information from Australia's answer to David Icke. Not. Not. <laughs> <laughs>
you know, and, and the, the geography that I see from this is this ongoing fear cycle. Mm. There's always something that you need to be frightened of, mm -hmm. okay? It was, it was terrorism, it was environmental collapse, it was the hole in the ozone layer, it was the Russians, it was the blah, 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 whatever. You can, uh, back at least 60 years, there's always something mm -hmm. that you need to be frightened of at any given moment. Yes. Okay? Yep. Right now, it's this thing. It you is, know? isn't it? Right now, but a year ago, it was, uh, you know, fundamentalist terrorism. Yeah. It seems to have evaporated Have you noticed the, the way terrorism is kind of, the whole terrorism threat has almost vanished. And also global warming. I haven't heard a, a word about global warming in three or four months now. Because you can't have multiple threats threatening people at the same time mm. because the aim of the of the fear is to make people obedient yes and if you have three or four existential threats yes. at the same time it's too much it's confusing yeah they'll yeah. become disabled and they'll think obedience. it's all not real because that one's not real and and, and the global warming well, doesn't seem real because it's fucking cold clearly yeah. it, it's not going to work so you know and i mean it's it's amazing to see these fear campaigns morph from one to the other and i mean what's it does seem an escalation what has happened. Yes, this I year, agree. also with the bushfires in Australia, yes. which is very suspicious, which I think is all caused by arson mainly rather than um, um, global warming. But go ahead. Why do you think they've escalated in 2020? Is there an agenda 2020? Speak to the Well, I mean, I, I agree, and, 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 and uh, I think a lot of us have felt that something is definitely coming. Things yeah. are getting stranger and yep. weirder. I mean, the, the last since this 2016 election, especially, mm -hmm. things have been. Weirder and weirder and weirder and weirder. That's true. The, the mainstream media has become mental, hysterical, mm -hmm. absolutely hysterical. They've always been dishonest. Yeah. The, you know, the, the, the mainstream media lying, and, and honestly, the bulk of the alternative media too mm -hmm. is completely dishonest and controlled, in my, in my view. Mm -hmm. You know, but, and the mainstream media have always lied, and they've always been an arm of, you know, the corporate economy and the state and all that sort of stuff. Sure. They always have been. But now they've become. Um, I wish there was a word beyond hysterical. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure what it is, you know, but it's gone into this sort of hyperdrive of insanity where they're pumping out ideas constantly that are simply irrational and yes. not, you can't really take them seriously, yes. you know. And I mean, I, I would also point out that this, this latest fear campaign around this virus which you know may or may not exist or it may be exaggerated or <laughs> it may be introduced or blah 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 it seems to me to be an element of something real combined with a uber hysteria and a and a kind of um swarming kind of police state you know like a kind of gro overwhelming you know growth in the implementation of a police state well it, it's all possible we don't i mean Honestly, we don't exactly know. Of course, you know, oh, yeah. but it's speculation. Sure, but what is not speculation, I would argue, mm. is that we've had this mounting campaign to mm. chip away at what we thought were obvious and valid freedoms. Mm. We've got to this very coincidental point where most of those have vanished, or they're eroded to the point where they're kind of useless. Yes. I mean, I would point out the obvious examples. Mm -hmm. In Australia, for example, I mean, um, you know, we've had all the data, uh, mandatory data retention of stuff course. because of terrorism. Yes, yes. We had to have all this stuff where everyone's electronic data is now open to yep. the state, yep, yep. you know, um, and can be used against you. You know, we've also had, um, we've, uh, we've had a, a cash ban, which mm -hmm. was supposed to come into law on, on the 1st of January yeah, this year. Many businesses year. now, you've got to you know, kind of use tap tap. In you know, we also had a, a roughly around... Um, the middle of um, last year, we had this national database in Australia activated with everyone's uh, driver's license photos. Yeah. I yeah. mean, if you put they all say they've activated things, facial recognition yes, too. Exactly. They said that. Underneath that, this guy. For those very reasons, yeah. you know. Look, you'd have to be profoundly sort of uh, sort naive, of olympically <laughs> gullible <laughs> to think that that just happens to be this cascading waterfall of coincidences. So where, we we where do you think point. we're heading? Where we? uh, do you think we're really well, heading I, into a 1984? My, my personal view is that the, the totalitarian groups, um, or you know, I mean you can call them whatever you like, but the totalitarian push behind this will push it as far as they can think they can get away with. Yes. Because they don't want to expose themselves to the, to, the, to the man in the street. Yeah, yeah. Okay? And you that's know? when it, it rolls back a bit when the kind of, um, what's it called, the lump and the hoi polloi or whatever become a restless, so to speak, and they begin to notice. You know, and to been, a degree, been, yeah, yeah. yes. I mean, I also think there's a, there's a, a class of people which isn't discussed enough mm. in this country, for example, 
and I call them the enabling class. Yes, oh, and these are the people who are in thrall to the ABC and, oh, the, and yeah. the Guardian. We know who they are. Uh, you know, they're the sort of bureaucratic yeah. class. And they're often smart enough to know what's going on, but they collaborate anyway, in my opinion. Well, they're, they're the enabling class. Yeah, they exactly. won't bite the hand that feeds them. Yeah, yeah. So you'll see them, and you see this already, they'll mm. be out policing mm. what you can say, what you can think, the of questions course. you can ask, yeah, yeah, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. They are the enabling class, okay? Well, they're glued to the ABC, they're glued to the Guardian, Etc. Oh, yeah, etc. Yeah, etc. Yeah. et whatever, you know, all those... Well, David Icke uh, makes a good know. point that we're entering, heading towards a society much like The Hunger Games. You've seen The Hunger Games films, have you? Yeah. And, like, The Hunger Games had this kind of elite society run by this kind of evil bastard, President Snow, and his kind of totalitarian regime. But then there was this weird kind of media class that was very much like today's media class. They're incredibly glitzy and, like, very colourful, and they're, they're all, they're all complete kind of ideological al bubble. LGBT kind of friendly and, like, trans friendly and, and extremely colourful and, like... They almost look like the latest rage on the on, on the streets of Milan or whatever, and they and they were the enabling class, and they and in a sense they were like the traitor class, which I thought was very interesting, and very much like what's going on now. You know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think the enabling class, as I call them, and the mm -hmm. traitor class is not a bad term either. Yeah. Or the collaborative class, whatever. Exactly, you know. that's what they are. Um, yeah. I think they're fundamental to this control mechanism. They yep. do control the media, yep. they control the political class, they control the bureaucratic class, the professional class. Yep. That is them. They're Maybe they're 10% of the population, I have no exactly. idea exactly, yeah. you know, but something like that. But without that enabling class or that collaborator class, the 1% or the 0.1% or the 0.01% or whatever the hell you want to call it, mm -hmm. the oligarchs, you know, the, the, the powerful, mm -hmm. the, you know, the moneyed, super national powerful interests mm -hmm. couldn't do. Yes, what they, they couldn't of course, do this without them. You know, they couldn't do it. You know, so without, in a sense, they're almost the most guilty because without that class, they're, they're unable to kind well, of implement I mean, their kind of you know evil agenda. So the so. obvious analogy, well, uh, an obvious analogy, is uh, how the Stasi operated in East Germany. Sure. You know, because these state apparatuses are always small. There's only so many people working them, mm -hmm. but they have collaborators. Yeah, so yeah, I mean, yeah, some cool. people estimate that one in three people in East Germany were you know, civilian collaborators with the Stasi, mm -hmm. you know, and they informed on people and they spied exactly. on their husbands and wives and best friends and blah, 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 mm. you know. And I mean, this is what we also have. We have a collaborative class that does this, you know. And so as far as you're concerned, we are, we're heading now um, full throttle into a kind of totalitarian... They'll, they'll push it as far as they think they can get away with, yep. you know. If people in the collab... This is just my opinion. Yep. If people in the collaborative... Some of them, because most of them won't, of course, because mm. they are ultimately stupid and obedient. Mm -hmm. But if some of them defect or get wind that they will suffer as well, mm -hmm. they may defect. Yeah, yeah. You know? And so and that's what we want, key. defectors. We want defectors everywhere. Yeah, 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 Actually, yeah, yeah. they'll push it as far as they can, but they don't want to expose themselves. Of course, yeah. So if they get wind that people are starting to get tweak or they're getting restless, mm -hmm. less, they're not believing the overreaction, the totalitarian overreaction and the irrationality of this reaction, mm. if people start to twig, they'll pull it back a bit mm -hmm. and they'll and that's a good they'll thing. learn from it. Mm -hmm. They'll learn from it. Yes. They'll, sh they'll, they'll institute it's much more control yeah, 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 over yeah. the internet, blah, blah, blah. Yep. And then they'll go further next time, yes. sadly, I think. You know, unless right. something changes, unless we go actually enough. Yes, this exactly. Well, we'll you know? come back for a, a short part three where we talk what can we do to fight these people. We'll talk sure. about that. But we're here with David Thrussell, Australian free thinker, uh, here in uh, out of the rural climes uh, uh, of Australia. And we'll be back with a shorter part three. Thank you. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, here we are with David Thrussell, a rural free thinker, uh, who will speak to the th strange events that are going on at the moment with uh, coronavirus and COVID-19. David, what can we do to fight these bastards, you know, to fight this kind of elite and this creeping totalitarianism? Absolutely. Um, to, first of all, it's, it's, it's so true what you say. We, live, we are witness to such incredibly strange times. Mm -hmm. This... This madness that's surrounded us like a sort of fog that's come out of nowhere mm -hmm. is actually incredible. Take yeah. a step back mm -hmm. for a second and go, this is a bizarre moment. It's hard to believe we are. It's a yeah. bizarre moment that we're in. It is, it is something Within like... Within the space of three weeks, yeah. we've, we're in the Soviet Union. Yeah, yeah. We're in the Soviet Union we are. in three yeah. weeks. It is, you know? it is. 
no and tanks rolled out. There wasn't a bloody no, revolution, no. and yet here we are. We're in the Soviet Union. And it's definitely an event even bigger than 9-11, what's happening now, because it's global. In and some ways, yeah, 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 yeah in yeah. some ways, absolutely. Mm-hmm. You know, And I think without a, to be honest, without a, a completely collaborative and spineless and idiotic political class mm-hmm. and media class, mm-hmm. this wouldn't be possible. No, exactly. Okay? It wouldn't be possible. What can we do about it? Yes. I think the first thing that we can do about it is... Be sceptical. Ask yep. questions. It's okay. People are trying to shut you down everywhere for asking questions, mm-hmm. but actually asking Keep questions. asking them. Keep asking questions, okay? Mm-hmm. Don't accept person XYZ's complete world view or they've got all the answers or whatever. Ask your own questions. Yep. Satisfy yourself. Keep asking questions. Do, remain sceptical, actually. You should be sceptical. You should be sceptical of anything that comes through the mainstream media or, in fact, any media. You know, most of the alternative mm. media is pretty dubious, in my view, actually. What else can we yeah. do? Well, the other obvious possibility, and, it, and it, it comes from the Soviet Union, think about how people survived the Soviet Union. Okay? Cause, how was that? Well, I've spoken to lots of people who lived in the Soviet Union. You know? they, none of them believed it. Yes. None of them believed it. You know? But they couldn't, like at, at, they couldn't attack it front hyper-normalization on. Hypernormalization. Well, of they it. couldn't attack it front on yes. because the state had all the power, yeah, course, had all the weapons, yes, and blah, blah, blah. So what you're talking about is civil disobedience. Yes. It's just going, no, yep. if you don't believe X, Y, or Z, or if you don't mm. think this uh, behavior is, is right or proper, don't go along with it. Don't mm-hmm. agree with it, and mm-hmm. don't go along with it. You know, civil disobedience, you know, in the, in the face of enormous power, is probably the most realistic thing that you can do, right. however you want to manifest that. You all know? right. It's, it's a, just a matter of talking to people and voicing your questions yes. or oh, I agree physical yeah, civil yeah. disobedience and yeah. not going along with it. You know? I mean, Very good. We've got to keep this short because I think we're running out of battery on our okay, camera today. Okay, sure. You know, there are now, I've noticed, friends in Germany have been sending me footage of protests in mm-hmm. Berlin, for example. People, thousands of people are taking to the streets yep. and protesting the lockdown and saying it's a curtailment of their civil liberties, etc. Et and you would agree with that? I think that if you think that that's a constructive thing to do, you should yep. do that. Yep. You know? Yes. I mean, you've got to you've got to re- remember that your civil liberties, which yes. were always very tenuous, yep. have now evaporated basically very overnight. quickly. Yeah. yeah. You know. Well, was look, this startling. is a, this is a fascinating chat we're having with David Thrussell, and we'll continue this chat again, maybe in say another a month or so. We'll come back and we'll continue and see where we're at. But uh, I'd like to thank David Thrussell. And any My final pleasure. words for the viewers of the report from Tiger Mountain? Keep thinking. Keep thinking, ladies and gentlemen. Keep asking questions. Keep asking questions. Thank you.